In this video, we're going to continue our work with probability and look at the relationship between events. Let's start off with mutually exclusive events. So mutually exclusive. These can't happen at the same time. So if we just jot this down, an example might be in playing cards. We can't have a red spade as spades are black. So they can't happen at the same time. So pulling a red card and a spade cannot happen. For mutually exclusive events, we can say the probability of A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. We've seen this in a previous video. We don't need to subtract the intersection as there's not an intersection. So if I wanted to show mutually exclusive events in a Venn diagram, I could have one event just here, the other event just here. I could label these up now A and B. So this is just one example of how a uh, mutually exclusive event could be shown using a Venn diagram. Let's now look at independent events. So independent events. So if we have independent events, the probability of one event happening won't influence the probability of the next. An example might be flipping a coin. If we flip a coin, the outcome of the first coin won't affect the outcome of the second coin. Compare that to if you're eating chocolates from a box where we have conditional probability. If you take one out, it's going to affect subsequent probabilities. If we have independent events, we can say the probability of A given B will be equal to the probability of A. That makes sense. It's saying if B has happened, the probability of A will be exactly the same. We can write that the probability of A intersection B will be equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. This holds for independent events. If you wanted to show why this works, if we just consider one way around this, we can say the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of B. Well, that's going to give me the probability of A for independent events, which we can see just here. That's what we have there. And that will be equal to the probability of A intersection B. Then I've got divided by the probability of B. So multiplying both sides by the probability of B, we can see the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B will give us the probability of A intersection B for independent events. So what we're going to do is use these formulae and we're going to work through a range of problems. So just remember these ones, that kind of makes sense and that's something that you looked at lower down the school and then these two right here should hopefully fit into place and be fairly logical. So the probability of A given B has already happened. Well, that's not going to influence the probability. So we can just write the probability of A. And using the, the multiplication law for independent events, which you would have seen lower down school, we just multiply the probabilities. OK, so let's do some questions. Uh, the first one, let's have a look what we got. Event A and event B are mutually exclusive. And the probability of A is 0 0.2. The probability of B is 0 0.5. We need to draw a Venn diagram to represent these two events. We need to find the probability of A union B and find the probability of not A intersection not B. So let's go ahead and do this. We can draw a Venn diagram. We have to remember, of course, all probabilities sum to give one. So all I'm going to do is something like I did on the last one. We're going to have this one. And this one, so what I'll do is put these on and we're going to have A, so let's put A here. So A is going to be here, B is going to be here, this is the sample space. So we're going to have 0 0.2, we're going to have 0 0.5. We know that all probabilities sum to give one, so that leaves us now 0 0.3. So we want to find the probability of A union B, or the probability of A union B for mutually exclusive events is simply a case of adding them. So we'll have the probability of A plus the probability of B. So that's going to give us now the 0 0.2 plus now the 0 0.5 and that will give us now 0 0.7. We need to find the probability of not A and not B. Well that's on the outside and we can simply say that that is going to be 0 0.3. We've subtracted now the probability of A 
and the probability of beef on one, and it just leaves us the 0 0.3. OK, let's try another one. Two events A and B are independent and the probability of A is one quarter and the probability of B is one fifth. We need to find the probability of A intersection B, the probability of A intersection not B and the probability of not A intersection not B. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down the probability of A intersection B will be equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. This holds true for independent events. So we can go ahead and write that down. So we can say that that is simply going to be 1 over 4. That's the probability of A multiplied by 1 over 5, which is going to give me 1 over 20. What I'm going to start doing now is filling out the Venn diagram. So I'm using both the formulae and the Venn diagram. So the intersection is 1 20th. We've got now the probability of A is 1 quarter. I'm going to write these all as 20th as I find it easier to work with. Entirely up to you from here. So that's going to be 5 20th, so I'm left with 4 20th. Remember, the probability of A is going to be 5 20th. I've got now a quarter or 5 20th, so I need to split that up. This is going to be 4 20th, so that's going to leave me now on here 3 over 20. We've got a total of 8 here, so this is going to be 12 over 20. When I give my an answer, I will simplify them. So if we look at the probability of it being A but not B, well, that is this part right here. So we can say now the probability of it being A but not B, well, that's going to be the 4 over 20, which we could write now as 1 over 5. 1 over 5 or 0 0.2. We want the probability of not A and not B. Well, that's the outside. So we can say now that the probability that it's not A and it's not B is going to give us now the 12 over 20, which we can simplify dividing numerator and denominator by 4. That's going to give us 3 over fifths, or we could say now 0 0.6. So all I've done is gone ahead from there. You might find it easier to work in decimals. It's entirely up to you. Let's just look at this one for a second. This one is often confused with the probability now of A intersection B not. A intersection B not would be now 19 twentieths. This is different. This is saying it's not A and it's not B. This is saying that it's A and B not. So it's not this part which would give us now 19 twentieths, or 0 0.95. So just be aware of that, um, but you can, of course, work from there. OK, so two events are independent, so I've simply used now the multiplication rule for independent events. We've got Q and R, so it says Q and R are two events such as a probability of Q is equal to 0 0.2, the probability of R is 0 0.4, and the probability of not Q and R is 0 0.4. We need to A, find the relationship between Q and R, B, find P, union, so probability of U, uh, Q union R, and then the probability of not Q intersection not R. OK, a bit of a hint in here. If we look at this now, and what I'll do, I'll, I'll just sketch this up. So we'll have one, and then we'll have the other. Let's put this around like so. So we've got the probability now of it being R as 0 0.4. So if I put these on, we're going to have Q, we're going to have R. So the probability of it being R is 0 0.4, and the probability of it not being Q and being R is going to be 0 0.4. Therefore, they're going to be now mutually exclusive events. So I can put that on like so, and put this one on as 0 0.2. And of course, we're left with S, which is going to give us 1 minus these two values, which will be 0 0.4. So we can state that they are mutually, so just jotting this down, mutually exclusive. Exclusive, exclusive. So they're mutually exclusive events. OK, um, let's now look at the probability of Q union R. So all we've got then is the probability of Q and or R is going to be the probability of Q plus the probability of R for mutually exclusive events so we're going to add for 0 0.2 plus for 0 0.4 which is going to give us 0 0.6 so nice and straightforward from there 
not Q and not R. Well, that's one minus this quantity. So we can say the probability that it's not Q and it's not R is going to be 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 is our final answer, or if you like, two fifths. Okay, let's have a look at another one. The events A and B are such that the probability of A is equal to one third, the probability of B is one quarter, and the probability of A union B is one half. We need to show that A and B are independent. Remember, there are lots of different approaches for this. If you want a reference point, you can consider the probability of A into section B will be equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B for independent events. So if we look at this, if I multiply them, I would have now 1 12. One way we can do this is with the formulae. I'm going to look at using a Venn diagram to do it as well. So what we can do is now say that the probability of A into section B will be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A union B. So this is going to give us now, on here, we've got the one third plus the one quarter minus the one half. So if I put these all into 12, so we're going to have four, then we can have plus three, then we can have minus six over 12, which is going to give us now one over 12. So we need to show that they're independent. That's one way that we could do it. An alternative approach would to be uh, now to use the Venn diagram. So we've got A and B and then the sample space. So what I'm going to say is that this right here is going to be X. What we can say then is that the probability of A only is one third minus X. The probability of B only is going to be one quarter minus X. And we can see from here now that one third minus x plus x plus one quarter minus x will be equal now to the, zero, uh, the one and a half, uh, sorry, the one half or 0 0.5. So if we just do a bit of rearranging, I'm just going to add the quarter and the third. That gives me now 7 over 12 minus 1x will be equal to 6 over 12. Subtracting 6 twelfths on both sides and then adding the x to both sides, we can see that x is going to be equal to 1 twelfth. That's another particular approach. You might like it, you might not. Um, but from here, we could go ahead and just fill out the Venn diagrams. So from here, we know that uh, x is 1 twelfth. So let's put these on. Uh, so we could put them in or we can just simply fill them in as we go. So what we're going to have then is the intersection. We know that the intersection is 1 12th. So this is going to be 1 12th. If we consider the probability of A is 4 12th, so I'm going to write this now as 3 over 12. This one is going to be 3 over 12, so I'm going to write this part now as 2 over 12. And that gives me now on the outside, as we know, 6 over 12 or 1 half. If I was going to draw this in a Venn diagram, I would simplify these. Um, down. So I'd write this now as 1 quarter, 1 twelfth, and then I'd write this as 1 six, and then 1 half. So let's just put those on, make them look a bit uh, better. So that would be 1 quarter, this would still be 1 twelfth, this would be 1 over 6, and this would be 1 half. We can see that from here, the probability of A union B is half, so the probability that it's outside those two uh, ellipses is going to be a half. The reason I like this, it just makes your calculations easier. So what we need to do now is find the probability of A and given not B. Okay, so if we do that, we can write the following. We can simply write from here the probability, so the probability of A given B didn't happen. So A, uh, A given B didn't happen. If that, of course, these are independent events, we can simply say now that's going to be the probability of A. We know the probability of A is going to be one third, so that's a straightforward question to answer. The independent events, so the probability of A, given it wasn't B, remember, whatever B does, it's not going to influence the probability now of A, so we simply say it's one third if they're independent. 
Let's say you were unsure about this. We could, of course, use a formula. We wouldn't need to because hopefully we would be happy now using this one. But of course, what we can say is the probability of A given not B will be equal to the probability of A and not B divided by the probability that it's not B. So this is another way we could show it, which of course is a longer way round. So if we look at A and not B, well, that's going to be the 3 twelfths. So if we write this down, 3 over 12 over the probability that it's not B. Well, the probability that it's not B is 1 quarter. So if we had now the, probab the probability of B being 1 quarter, the probability of it not being B, of course, is going to be 3 quarters, which we could, if we wanted, write as 9 twelfths. So if I do that, it just makes my calculation slightly easier. Over 9 twelfths, and that, of course, is going to give us 3 over 9. These will cancel, which, of course, is going to give us 1 over 3. We would kind of be expected to spot that, but if you didn't, you could go ahead and use this particular approach. So with this question, I've gone around a few different ways to see which one you might feel most comfortable with. Um, it's entirely up to you from there. So just remember those formulae, and what we can do is the following. For mutually exclusive events, the probability of A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. For independent events, the probability of A given B is the probability of A, and the probability of A intersection B is the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B.